How is everybody doing? Hope you're all well. We're going to take a look at the solo album output from Robert Plant from 1982 until 1993. So let's get cracking. First up is Pictures at 11. This was released in 1982. This one, a lot of fans like it. It's not bad. It sounds a little bit like Zeppelin between physical graffiti, presence, and in three outdoor. There's a little, a kind of yeah. It reminds me of those albums. Yeah, some of the songs on this would have been ideas for those albums. You have the. Um, one song was released on the Zeppelin label. And <clears throat> Quite minimalistic, isn't it? Yeah, sort of tracks burning down one side. It's a collaboration between um, Plant and the members of his new band, Robbie Blunt and Jez Woodruff. Bass was handled by Paul Martinez. And the drums on this album. Five of the tracks are battered by Phil Collins. And he plays quite hard on this, I will say that. There's two by Cozy Powell, being slow dancer, like I've never been gone. And Fat Lip, track six, is actually a Roland TR-808 as far as I know. So there's actually not a drummer on that track. So yeah, um, it's, it's a very clean sounding album, mm, very clean sound, it's hard, very clean on it, and Robbie Blunt's playing is great, mm, Moonlight and Samosa, that's, to me that sounds like something off Into the Outdoor, which is, which is the worst Zeppelin album, I don't care what people say. Um, got lots of keyboards on it and it's horrible. Uh, Jimmy Page's playing was poor at the time as well. He was kind of just more interested in other things. He was interested in everything else but actually his guitar chops. Pledge Pin, Slow Dancer. Worse Than Detroit. Uh, fat Lip. Yeah, Fat Lip is a strange song because it kind of meanders along and the lyrics are just bizarre you know down at the station where the trains come in or <laughs> down the river where the fishies swim <laughs> like I've never been gone and mystery title like I said it's it's not bad you know if, if you're a Zeppelin die hard you probably won't like it but it was a start and um, that's uh, where it all began for Robert in 1982 Next up is The Principle of Moments. This was released in 1983, hot on the heels of the debut. This one changes quite a bit. It's, uh, there's a little bit more noodling going on here. It's a little bit more prog, I guess. Um, there's nothing here that even harks back to Zep. Um, other Arms in the Mood. I really like that one. Yeah, starts off really kind of it just it builds up um, messing with the making reckless love through with the two step horizontal departure stranger here then over there and of course big log which is a fantastic track and there's some sleeve notes here and it says um, Phil Collins the Genesis veteran plays on six of the eight selections that's actually not true um, he plays on five because Barrymore Barlow, I think he was from Jethro Tull. He plays on two tracks and Collins plays on five. And Big Log again has the Roland drum machine on it. So I think that's a mistake. Unless he played percussion on Big Log, I'm not sure. It was just, just a little um, note for you to take. Uh, 
again, Robbie Blunt guitar, Jez Woodruff keyboards, Paul Martinez bass, drums Phil, drums Abermore Barlow. I've toured with uh, Robert as well, as well as being in Genesis, as well as doing his own solo career. <laughs> Busy man. Next up is Shaken in Stirred. You know where that line comes from, don't you? Well, kind of 007, Shaken not Stirred. So Robert Plant, Shaken and Stirred. This my friends, <laughs> is an odd album. It's a very strange one. I remember buying this, I think I was after buying Now and Zen in 1989 on CD and I, I bought this in a sale on CD and I just, I thought I'd wasted eight or nine pounds. It's just, the first times you hear it, it's just inaccessible. It's just, you know, look at the the, the the song titles. Hip to who? Kalaloo, Kalaloo. Too loud. It's almost like he goes out of his way to make odd sounding... Pff, oh, trouble your money. Pink and black. Goes out of his way to make odd angular sounding music. It's mainly synth driven. Little by little. That's a fantastic track. Then you have... Do, do, a dodo. Easily laid and sixes and sevens, which is another good track. But sound quality of this album is fantastic. Production is great. And, uh, but it's a strange beast and I, I like it because it's almost perverse. You know, it, it's, it definitely has a, <laughs> a niche following. Um, a lot of people hate it. You know, they, they want more from it, you know. And yeah, it's just a very, very strange album indeed. In 1988, Robert came up good and we get Now and Zen. This is pop rock done properly, I guess. This is a great album. I've always liked this. The songs are strong. The musicianship is great, arrangements are good. Um, yeah, it's 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 one of my favorite albums by a major artist from a major band. Gone solo, heaven knows, great track. Dance of my own, very good. Tall cool one. The way I feel, I really like that one as well. It's excellent. Helen of Troy, Billy's Revenge. It's kind of a almost like a kind of a rock and roll throwback. And then Ship of Fools, another great track. That was a Miami Vice as far as I know. So was um, Little by Little. And then Why and Why Clean It Neat. And there's a bonus track on this, Walking Towards Paradise. And this album is a full digital recording. My, my, my. 1988, that was the, the, all the buzz. Digital, 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 digital. And you see DDD. Written on the album. Yeah. Jimmy Page plays on two tracks. This little symbol is here. Zosso, whatever it is. New band as well. Uh, Doug Boyle guitars. Phil Scrag bass. Phil Johnson keyboards. Chris Blackwell drums. And uh, he's using more backing singers than he previously did. Produced by Tim Palmer, Robert Plant and Phil Johnson. So there you go. Mm. So yeah, that's um, would be one of the highlights of his solo career without a doubt. And a fitting end to the 80s. Next up is Manic Nirvana. Yeah, I remember buying this in March 1990 when it came out. And something about it, uh, it, it, it was just a little bit too, too commercial, too slick or something, I'm not sure. Um, I was a bit disappointed with it. It, it, it kind of goes back into heavy guitar rock. 
and um, this was kind of even before grunge exploded really 1990 and um, it was starting to happen all right you know but I think 91 was really the big grunge year but this one yeah there's some good songs in it but it, it's like it's almost like a cartoon version of himself hurting kind yeah that that was a bit almost just rock for the sake of it it was almost like like ZZ Top sped up or something it was the lyric is, is horrible girl of my dreams girl of my mind uh, she's a hurting kind um, something east something west come back baby you're the best um, you know that's you know from a guy that wrote or co-wrote or whatever he did stairway to heaven and stuff like that and um, I find it a bit hard to stomach uh, big love and it's kind of like, you know, I'm going to get this. Kind of, it's almost like kind of a hip hop y kind of trip hop y beat underneath it. Like it's. Yeah, I don't know. It's a bit strange. She said, that's a, that's a, a bonus track on the, um, on the CD. And Nirvana. Too bad. I like tie dye in the highway. That's a good one. I think it's got talk from Woodstock on it, and I'm sure the voice is um, uh, Bill Graham. It sounds like Bill Graham. Uh, good morning. What we have in mind is breakfast in bed for four hundred thousand people. Your mom said you cried in your sleep last night. Anniversary. Liars dance. Kind of an acoustic thing. Yeah. And then watching you. So he's kept the wolf for this. Mm, I just find it a bit too bombastic, you know. It's mm. remember as well, like there, there there was a rock revival. I mean, Guns and Roses were, were were very big in 1990. There was a lot of there was a lot of um, you know bands just blasting out rock again you know because the late 80s was all synth pop and stuff like that so you know rock bands were becoming popular again and this was you know I made a dance music explosion as well like you know so there was a lot going on and finally we come to Faith of Nations now I'll be totally honest I remember when this came out and I had all the other albums I bypassed it for some reason and uh, there was a lot of promotion at the time and I never really, I don't know why, I just didn't buy it. I, I just completely bypassed it, like I said. And I think that year, 93, I was getting into you know, Joe Satriani and Steve Vai and all these other guitar artists and that was kind of more satisfaction. But I only bought this last week and I've listened to it a few times and I actually absolutely love it it's it's a great album totally underrated really i think um this is the, one of the high points and i reckon it's probably i reckon it even outshadows now and then um production is fantastic there's it's not synthetic like 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 the other albums um calling to you down to the seaside great band on it and uh, good production there's even a cover, if I were a carpenter. That's absolutely, yeah, he's at the top of his game here, without a doubt. The voice as well has matured. You know, he's not doing anything crazy with the vocal. Produced by Chris Hughes. Guy, I think he's worked with Tears for Fears. I, I think he was a drummer with Adam and the Ants. Um, Love the stuff that he produces. But, uh, yeah, it's a good album. Released on Fontana, believe it or not. Not... Plant's own Esperanza album, but I think the rest of the world is released on Esperanza. Uh, Twelve tracks. It's a little long. It's, it's nearly an hour. But um, another brilliant track is Twenty Nine Pounds. You know. So yeah, this was this was kind of um, shot in the arm for me this week, and. Uh, 
It's kind of tricky reading that. Um, Led Zeppelin style font. But, um, some of the songs are collaborations as well. And, um, Now, he does get a bit political on about world pollution and the environment and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, like I said, I, I really like it. And the, 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 the arrangements are rich. There are a lot of musicians on it as well. Um, this kind of, kind of Moroccan style stuff and strings and the whole shebang. So yeah, it's a good album. And if you don't have this, I would... Definitely recommend it. Um, yeah. The original vinyl is very hard to get now, but it was reissued for Record Store Day in 2019. And um, I still haven't seen it, but I would highly recommend this album. It's a great album. Uh, you ought to have it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe and take care.